الحمد لله وصلاة وسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبك في الله because of so many various persons and personalities who have a problem with the usul of Ahlul Sunnah, uh, especially when it comes to uh, the Muslim rulers or tyrant rulers or rulers that make mistakes and sins and are oppressive, that they seem to have a different position and their position more often than not is in line with the Khawarij and from the usul of takfir. Takfir bi ghayri haq, without the right to do so. And this is from the usul of Ahla Tafarruf, uh, the people of violence and the people of extremism, the Khawarij, who the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said about them, uh, Al Khawarij Kilab al Nar, the Khawarij are the dogs of the fire. That Nas is talking about people make takfir, because I see people, they have so many weird understandings. The people furthest away from that characteristic, the, the takfiris, Describe uh, Ahl Sunnah's Khawarij, which is the strangest thing, but it shows you how the tat wheel because there is a relationship, and some of the Khawarij are from Ahl Kalam. So there is a relationship between uh, a lot of the Takfiris, the extreme Takfiris. Some of them are so extreme, you can see their relationship with Ahl Kalam that they give taqdeem to their intellect, you know, preference to their intellect. Over the divine text, meaning the book of Allah and the son of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let me give you an example. One example I recall when I first left Yemen many, many years ago. I met an individual. Uh, we argued and debated. We just got out of hand. And it was time for prayer. They called the prayer. And this was in the UAE. I said, khalas, let's finish. My Arabic wasn't that strong as far as speaking, but you know, I held my own and we actually were debating and going at it. He was a Jordanian, Tekfiri. And anyway, he said, we got in the issue of Saeed Kutub and all kind of wasted time, uh, issues wasting time. But it got really heated. And then he said, uh, or I said, you know, khalas, let's go pray in the masjid. Forget, you know, we'll talk about this after Salat. You know, the Adhan was being called. There was a masjid not far. So we're walking. He said, no, no, no. He said, I'm not praying in that masjid. He said, the government is uh, kuffar, they're disbelievers, so he made takfir on the whole government. And then he said that the police and the imam, uh, you know, they are, well, they're monafics, they're hypocrites because they're following this apostate leader. And the musallin are also apostates because they're praying behind this uh, hypocritical imam. And it just went on, and I just was so shocked to actually see that myself because this is the things you read about when you read about groups like Jamaat Takfir or Hijra, this is a revival of the Takfir of Takfirism in contemporary times. It came through the people who were prior to Said Qutb, uh, or, or after Said Qutb, I believe, uh, like Faraj. Uh, I forgot his his full name, but he was the leader of Jamaat Takfir or Hijra, and some of the other groups and and uh, ideologues. The point being is. Look at how their intellect and their desires led them so far away that they divided from the Jama'a al Muslimin, they divided from the Jama'a, claiming that they're the upholders of the Sharia, claiming that they're the ones who are Ahl Sunnah, but they don't even pray with Muslims. All the Muslims are disbelievers to them or hypocrites, which a hypocrite is actually worse in worse situation than a disbeliever. They're in the lowest parts of the hellfire. So, a very strange how their ta'wil, their intellect, how it just goes. It's a bowling ball of flat, uh, ref, uh, effect. And that's some of the ulama, they use a term, they call it uh, takfir musalsil or something like this. It's like, you know, one thing leads to another. You're a disbeliever, so your mom is a disbeliever for this. Your father, your cousin, your uncle, the person who shook your hand. And, you know, it just goes on and on and on. And this shows you it's, it's from there. It's kind of a loose intellect, a strange. And it shows they give taqdeem to their intellect over the text, which is the opposite of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Esma'u wa when esta'mil alaykum abdin habishi. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, hear and obey, even if a uh, Ethiopian slave uh, was, was your leader. Hear and obey. So it means race, all those things, whatever the Arabs <laughs> thought was great, that they were greater than or whatever. None of that matters. It's about it's about Islam, and it's about upholding the Islamic leadership. 
The Prophet sallallahu said, A sultan dhillillah fil ard. Faman akramahu akramahum Allah. Akramahu Allah. Waman ahanahu ahanahu Allah. This is in uh, Sunan Tirmidhi, Hadith Sahih, that the Prophet sallallahu said, The leader is like the shade of Allah in this earth. And whoever respects him and gives him, you know, his respect, then Allah will give him the respect. And whoever uh, degrades the leader or belittles the leader, Allah will belittle him. The Prophet والسلام, also said, and this shows us the importance of being patient. There's countless ahadith. We're just going to mention a few just to make our point so that we can get an understanding because so many people have strange views based upon their desires. Uh, this is a hadith that is in Ibn Abi Asim fi, sun, fi Sunnah on Adi ibn Hatim. Qal, kunna ya Rasulullah, la nas'alaka an ta'a min attaqa, walakin min fa'ala wa fa'ala, fa dhakara shar. So the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'een, they said, O Messenger of Allah, we're not going to ask you about obedience, because they already knew that this is the usul of Ahl Sunnah, that we're obedient to the Muslim ruler. That's it. Khalas. There's no debate about that. That's muqarrar in the salaf. That is ijma' salaf. Khalas. He said, we're not, gonna, we're not asking you about obedience to the one who is God-fearing, who has taqwa. However, what about the one who does such and such and such and such, and then he mentioned a lot of evil, evil deeds. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ittaqullah wa asma'u wa atiyu. The Prophet ﷺ said, fear Allah and hear and obey. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Min ra'a min amirihi shay'in fa karahu fal yasbir fa innuhu laysa ahad yufarak jama'a shibrin fa yumut illa mata maitat in jahiliyyah. These are just some of the nusus. I could give, we could sit probably for 45 minutes of just just a hadith. This hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he said, whoever sees something from his leader and he dislikes it. This doesn't mean it's something uh, good. This is talking about oppressive leaders and those who are tiring. Maybe they're taking your money and maybe they're punishing you and, 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 and torturing you. Falyasbar. The Prophet Sallallahu gave us the, uh, the ilaj, the medicine for how we deal with that tyranny. Fasbir. فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ أَحَدْ يُفَارَقَ الْجَمَعَ شِبْرًا so verily, there isn't a single person who divides the ummah or who breaks away from the ummah even a hand span and then dies except that he dies the death of Ahl Jahiliyyah. Now in that story I told you, and there's so many countless takfiris like this, uh, how do you think a person like that, if they die, how they will meet Allah? That they made takfir of the leaders, the the imams are are hypocrites. I mean, this is they don't even know the imams. They're just because they get a salary, they they must be hypocrites. They must be munafiks. Munafik, that's big. It's big making takfir of somebody. It's big calling someone a hypocrite. It's big, you know, saying these things. It's not easy. It's not something light on the tongue, and we have to be careful what we say. Isn't this dividing from the jamaah? Of course, this guy literally. Was, would not pray with us. And I said, and to Vaughn. I said, you're misguided. And he said, and to Vaughn. He called me something, and I just wanted to knock this guy out, man. But my man was with me, my brother, and he took me from Uzbekistan. Beautiful brother. May Allah bless him and preserve him. I remember his name, Abdul Hakim. Just remembered him now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him with khair. Uh... Uzbekistan or Tajikistan, I can't remember. Anyway, Kazakhstan. He's from Kazakhstan. Anyway, he took me and we went to the masjid. He said, Khalid, na, 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 let's go. So the point being, Ahabatatullah, is look at how much Ahlul Dalal and Bid'ah, they claim, they're the biggest claimers of the Sharia. Every minute. Some of those guys get on the corner in, in disbelieving countries. I see it in the UK especially. Women with niqab and everybody's marching. We're supporters of the Sharia and all that's insane. 
That is insane that you are going to protest to a non-Muslim government to support you in your establishing the Sharia in their land. That just, it just goes against Islam. It goes against anything from the Sunnah of the Prophet That's not how you establish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rule. You, who are, what are you talking about? What minhaj, what methodology are you adopting? So you see that they are the biggest claimers of the Sharia and biggest claimers in, uh, of supporting the Sharia, but so, they have some of the biggest mukhalifat of the Shar. When we listen to some of those takfiris, the way they make takfir like you're drinking tea or water, they make takfir declaring believers to be disbelievers with no hujjah, with no evidence. And a big shart of takfir is what? What is the one of the big conditions of takfir? Iqamatul hujjah wal bayan. It is establishing the evidence. It's establishing the proof. How many of those leaders or how many of those people who you make takfir of have you even established the evidence for? But instead, it's just it's easier just to sit in your house and make takfir. That's that's much easier. Or sit in the park in Hyde Park or any other place that you go, and that's in the UK, but you can do it in some guys do it in Manhattan, downtown Manhattan in America. So we have the same. insane uh, individuals, same methodology, same medhab, doing the same uh, distorted, innovative practices, which go against from the book of go against the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those are just some of the souls just to put some heat under the Takfiri's feet. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be a source of good, not a source of evil and controversy, but controversy except in only in that it's bringing hujja wa bayan, we hope. And let it not be something that it will be on our scale of bad deeds. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.